Praise the Lord. Morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How do you feel this morning? Everybody looking all juicing up this morning? See a lot of smiles this morning? I see God must have done something this morning. Praise the Lord. Eternal God in heaven. Lord, we come, Lord, with bow our heads and our hearts. This morning, dear Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, just to tell you thank you. Lord, you didn't have to touch it this morning, Lord, but you touched it this morning, Lord. And right now, Lord, we just want to tell you thank you. Lord, you've been so good to us, Lord. You've been better up till we've been to our own self, Lord. And right now, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. And pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that you let your light shine upon us this morning, Lord. And, Lord, if you find any evil way, Lord, take it out right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that you let your joy shine this morning, Lord. Give us more love. Give us more peace and more understanding, Lord. But Lord, you know, we couldn't have made it without you, Lord. You the one God rose early one Sunday morning with all power in your hand. You the one did it, Lord. You the one does, Lord. It was you, Lord. You the one that gave up, get forgiven us for all our sins. You did it, Lord. I just wanted to tell you thank you, Lord. Bless those out of sick this morning, Lord. Just that old tumor this morning, Lord. Just that old arthritis this morning, Lord. Just that old blood pressure this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I know you can do it for us, Lord. If you could only split the wide sea, Lord, you can touch the problems that we are going through in life, Lord. So just help us, Lord, while we call on your holy and righteous name this morning, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for those that are here this morning. Bless the home, bless the family, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Stretch out your hand this morning, Lord. Show us a word from on high this morning, Lord. Bless the man that going to bring the word for us this morning. Bless his home, bless his family, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We show up and show up this morning, Lord. So we need to hear a word from you this morning, Lord. Your praise and mercy, Lord, has brought us from a mighty long way. But sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes almost never to the ground. But I know we got to say it. Lord, 
whatever problems you are going, facing in life. And we know we got a Savior that we can call on. And I pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you would touch my granddaughter this morning, Lord. I pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you would go in the hospital room where she's lying this morning, Lord. And touch her body right now, Lord. Please, Lord, touch her right now. In the name of Jesus. I know you can do it, Lord. Lord, if you did it for me, you can do it for her, Lord. Bless her parents sitting there by her side this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we just gonna give you praise. I give you the honor. I give you the glory, God.
in it. Now, if you want to rejoice with me, why don't you go ahead and put those hands together? What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Father God, we come to you right now, God, just to say thank you. Thank you, God, just for waking us up this morning clothed and in our right minds. God, we thank you, God, for the use and the activity of our limbs. We thank you, God, that last night was not our last night. But you looked down on us this morning and you touched us with the finger of love. And as the old deacon would say, you call our golden moments to roll up. So God, we come to you, God, with praise on our lips. We come to you, God, with worship in our hearts. We come to you, God, excited about the testimony, God, that you have given us. Knowing, God, that if it had not been for you on our side, Lord, where Oh, where will we be, God? So right now, let our worship, let our praise, God, be pleasing in your sight. We are sitting down at your table, God, and we're ready to feast. So feed us your word until we want no more. Now, God, cover your servant. Cover my mind, God. Cover my mouth. Hide me behind your cross. So, God, I am not seen. I am not seen, God, but your word is felt, and you get the glory. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, be acceptable in your sight. For, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And all God's children say, amen, amen. amen. Will you please help me in thanking this music ministry for ushering us into the presence of God? excited in the office when I heard that I will bless the Lord at all times. For he is good. How many know that you serve a good God? Even when your situation ain't good, he is still good. And that is reason enough to give him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. If you have your Bibles, would you please stand with me and turn with me to the book of Philippians. We're looking at Philippians this morning. Philippians chapter number two. Philippians chapter number two. And we are going to begin our reading at verse number six. Philippians chapter number two, verse number six. Last week, y'all got me. I'm not even going to ask till I drink some water this time. <laughs> y'all surprised me last week. Philippians chapter number two, verse number six. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't say, hold on, Pastor. Hold on. All right, I could drink some more. Philippians chapter number two, verse number six. We're going to begin our reading at verse number six. And the word of the Lord says this. Who being in the very nature, God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. I know this is not on the screens, but I'm going to read verse 9 down to 11. Therefore, God, he exalted him to the highest place, and he gave him the name that is above every name. Right. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow right. in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Right. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Right. Amen. That is Philippians chapter number two, verse six, number six, all the way down to 11. As you go to your seats, please pray with me and think with me from this sermon topic. I did what I had to do. I, I did what I had to do. In, in life, you have a choice to make. You can either give up, give in, or you can give it all you got. Have you ever gone to the extreme measure to make sure your needs were met? 
has there been a time where you almost fell short, but some way and somehow you pulled yourself together to make things better for yourself or your family? We, we can agree that at the end of the day, we're going to do what we need to do to ensure our families and ourselves have the best life possible. For someone, you had to pull it together to complete that degree. For someone else, you had to pull it together to get your health back on track. For someone, you had to make things happen on the job. Maybe accept a pay cut or accept the fact that the business was closing because of the pandemic. Yeah. For someone else, it was as simple as you doing whatever was necessary to put food on your table. Yeah. For, for, for most, life has been nothing but you doing what you needed to do to make it day by day. Yeah. We, we all know what it's like to push ourselves to the limit. Yeah. To, to think outside the box, to not do what we are comfortable with but doing what we got to do right. to keep a sense of normality. Right. We, we know that according to Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 1, that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Right. But this morning, as we close the Freedom Series, we take a peek, not just at an example of freedom, but we witness Jesus doing what he needed to do to ensure our freedom while showing us how to aid others in being free. Right. I say this morning, we're going to look not just at a regular example of freedom, but we are going to take a peek at our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he is doing what he needed to do to ensure our freedom while showing us how to aid others in being free. Jesus, I like Jesus. He, he, he is the perfect example because Jesus, he gives us practical methods and how we can make sure our brothers and our sisters in Christ are not imprisoned by their sin, but they are set free, they are set free by what it is he did for us all. The first thing that Jesus, he, he shows us in the text, is the first thing he does is he gets on our level. All right. yes, yes. A college friend, back in my good old college days at Great Bethune Cookman University, all right. he shared this quote with me. He would say, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You, you can't, you won't ever affect people's lives from your high horse. You cannot affect people's lives in a positive way from your high horse. Jesus, he, he understands that, he understood that that's why verse number 67 says, who being in the very nature of God, he did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, right. being made in human likeness. Listen, in order for Jesus to free us from sin, he would have to become us. Sin. That thing, it, it had us bound. It, it had us pinned down and it had us binding it up. And the only way for a man to be free from sin was for a man to die for sin. Okay. I, 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 don't, I don't know about you, but it's, it's hard to comprehend. It's, it's, it's hard to make a man who is not at fault <laughs> take the fault for someone at fault. But God so loved us that in spite of what sin we committed, in spite of what addiction you overcame, in spite of whatever setback you had to face, he got down on our level. But, 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 but watch this. It couldn't be just any man. It, it, any man wouldn't do this. The man, the Bible says, the man, he had to be spotless and without blemish. The man, he had to be sinless. Listen, all throughout the Bible, mother, they, they, they tried other men. They, they put everybody else up on the pedestal. They put the pressure on their shoulders, but the other men, they couldn't get their act together. They, they tried Elijah, but Elijah was suicidal. They, they, they tried Moses, but Moses, he had a speech problem. They, they, they tried Noah, but Noah was a drunk. They, they tried Jacob, but Jacob was out there cheating. They, they tried Jonah, but Jonah, he ran from God. But there was a man who came down through 40 and 2 generations, who made himself in the likeness of a human, and he wrapped himself in flesh, and he was able to set us free. Jesus, 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 he had to take himself, and he had to humble himself. That's what your Bible says. It says that he 
Mm. Can you imagine Jesus, who was already sitting beside the Father, right. Right now, right now. having the assignment to leave his throne? Oh my God. He, he, he had the assignment to leave his throne and to take on humanity. Can, can you imagine God coming down from glory, coming down to where? I, can't, I cannot imagine. Jesus having to make the decision to come down up his throne. Yeah. To come down to earth and take on humanity. I have to ask how many lives are left in the balance because you refuse to leave your throne? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I can tell just by the response, deep, that you are too high and mighty to talk to those who don't look like you. You, you, you too good to talk to those who may be going through a rough time in their life. How many people are you letting slide because you ignore God's call on your life to reach out to the poor and the oppressed? All right, all right. All right, we, we have a responsibility because that's how Jesus saved us by coming off his throne and coming down to earth and he saved us. And if Jesus, if he can do it, then baby, your position is Concerns because we assume because he is Jesus, he didn't feel what we feel. He didn't struggle how we struggle. But you have to know when Jesus, when he took on flesh, he submitted all. He, he, he submitted all his power and his authority and he took on human nature. Jesus, he couldn't go from one place to the other. He was a human. He had to walk. Jesus, he didn't have all knowledge. That's why we can find Jesus early in his life, sitting in the synagogue, learning from the teachers. So it's not a question of him being all high in life, but he came down from knowing all, from being everywhere at the same time, from being all high and mighty, and he wrapped himself in a service place. And he submitted himself to humanity. That means that he fully became human. He, he, he felt what you felt. He, he heard what you heard, and he was tempted just like any one of us. That's why the Bible tells us, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are tempted. Yet he did not sin. St. Paul, my friends, my family, if we are going to affect the world and set the captives free, and if we are going to make disciples, then we have to get off of our high horse. And we have to get on the level of those, here it is, who need a man by the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, not, only, not only does he get on our level, boy, some memories came back, but he exhibits absolute obedience. Jesus is in the text. He doesn't just take himself from glory and gets on our level, but he exhibits, he displays absolute obedience. I have to tell you, and it may shock you that the will of God cannot be altered or adjusted. The will of God, it is what it is. And if you are going to follow the will of God, then he says, don't complain about it, just do it. by becoming obedient to death. Here it is, even death on the cross. What is required of you? What is required of each individual in here is expected to be executed by you. What God assigned for you to do in your time on this earth, God expects you to do it and he expects you to execute it. The, the word of God is very specific when it comes to the plan of salvation. It, it, it is detailed how the sinner, which is us, becomes free or saved from the penalty of sin. 
with, which means Christ in his human form. He had to align himself with the detailed instructions on how to save all mankind. In Christ, he, he shows us how to follow God's instructions completely. He says, listen, I'm going to dot every I and I'm going to cross every T because that is what God requires of me. You read it. It says he was obedient to death, even death on the cross. That sounds just like Jesus, doesn't it? He, he did exactly what God told him to do. He, he wasn't half in and half out like we are sometimes. He didn't just settle for dying, but he died on the cross. Absolute, absolute, absolute obedience. Absolute obedience is not about you doing what you want to do, but about you doing what God wants you to do. It, 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 it's not that you are to read the Bible, but you have to read the Bible because His Word, it keeps you grounded. Listen, it's not that you always are in the mood to pray, but you have to so you don't lose your mind. Listen, it's not that you always want to pull up the St. Paul on a Sunday at 10 30 in the morning, but you have to make your way to church because you know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would you be? And I just have to ask, is there anybody in no, it's not that I have to do anything, but it's because God has been too good in my life. He brought me from day to day. He healed my body and he told me to run on. Yes. Yes, absolute obedience is not, yes. it's not even just about doing what God told you to do. But it's about doing what God told you to do, how he told you to do it. operate in absolute obedience, we will find God doing things in our lives that we cannot even begin to explain. Listen, read the Bible. Obedience, it opens blind eyes and causes the lame to walk. Obedience yeah. is what raised Lazarus from the dead. Obedience is what split the Red Sea. Obedience is what slayed Goliath. Obedience is what brought the walls of Jericho down. Obedience is what opened doors. And when we find ourselves being disobedient, we always reap God's consequences. But I have to tell you, church, you have to have that absolute obedience. In the book of Deuteronomy, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 28, we see God telling us the blessings that come along when we fully obey the word of God. Can I give it to you? Deuteronomy chapter number 28 says, if you fully obey God, and if you follow his command, you'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed when you come in, and you'll be blessed when you go out. Your enemies will be defeated. Whatever you put your hand to will be blessed. You will be a lender and not a borrower. Listen, if you show absolute obedience, the Bible says, watch this, God, he will hook you up. Please don't get this thing twisted. Like I say, we live in a culture where we learn how to give, 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 and we think that that is what God requires of us. God says, listen, you can keep your stuff. Mm -hmm. Come on, my God. Come on. Listen, I'm the one who gave you your stuff. That's right. Everything belongs to him. Only thing that I require from you is your obedience. Oh, my God. Yes. All right. Scripture says, Say that. Always, that obedience is better than your sacrifice. Yes, right. Obedience is better than your sacrifice. And if you obey me, 
I will open up the windows of heaven. Yes. And I will pour down the blessings. Yes. Here it is that you don't even have room to receive. So if I can give you something that you don't even have room for, why do you think I need it? All right, say that. Say that. He says, first, I got on your level. Mm -hmm. I got down to where you were. Yes, yes, I, I felt your pain. Yes. Yep. I cried when you cried. Yes. I empathize with you. Mm -hmm. Then he says, I'm going to take this to the next level. I'm going to obey what God told me to do. He says, I'm not just going to die. But I'm going to die on that cross. The, the lesson there is, to fully obey what God tells us to do. Fully, completely. It, it can't be altered or adjusted. I, I, I know we want to say, well, Lord, I did it this way. But God says, God says, listen, that is not the way I told you to do it. If you do it the way that I told you to do it, then you will get my results. But if you do it your way, what you get is up to you. And, and because Jesus did what he had to do, he got on our level. Mm -hmm. He displayed absolute obedience. We, because of that, we were freed from sin. The throne, it was his. And the glory, watch this, it went back to God. Give me two. I got. He not only got on our level, mm -hmm. he, he not only uh, display absolute obedience. But lastly, he saw the task all the way through. Yes, yes, right. yes. thank you. Uh, watch this verse number nine. Verse number nine, it tells us, or it begins with the word, therefore. Mm -hmm. Therefore, therefore. Therefore, it literally means because of those previous actions, now this is taking place. That's right. Let's start uh, Whatever God has called you to do, I want you to do it to completion. Yeah. Right. I, want, I want you to finish the task, and I want you to finish it well. Right. Right. And, and, and when we finish what God has called us to do, yes. well, the best way we can, yes. he will make your name great. Amen. Oh, thank you. You, you, you got your Bibles open in verse number nine. He says, because of what Jesus already did, God, he exalted him to the highest place. Yes. Yes. And he gave him a name that is above every other yes. 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 Okay, all right, all right. So I have to stop right there because the, while, I was, while I was studying the other night, uh, I, I couldn't stop because it says uh, uh, he exalted him to the highest place and he gave him a name that is above. Every, I, okay, y'all can read it. Listen, he says, listen, I have to read it again. He says, God exalted him to the highest place and he gave him a name that is. Uh, uh, don't, don't go there. Listen, don't go there. Stop reading. Listen, he said, listen, God exalted him to the highest place and he gave him a name that is. Now, he didn't say that was, but he said that is. That means that after he did that, Whatever you, I know this is bad grammar, but whatever you is going through, his name is above that. You can be going through the worst time of your life, but just call on the name of Jesus. Listen, it's not a what situation with my God, so my God is above every other name. He, 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 he will look you up. And what, what you thought he couldn't do, you will begin to see God in your life. Yeah, things, things you didn't even qualify for uh, will always be yours. The tables that you couldn't even wipe off, now you'll be at the head of them all because you serve a God whose name is above every other name. I like that. Uh, that took me back to third grade English class when we was looking at the present, the past, and the future tense. And what that lets me know is that it is always in the future tense with God. But not only will he lift your name up and make your name great, but he'll add weight to your name. All right. All right.
Y'all see that verse number 10 says uh, that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should <laughs> Listen, I know y'all can't tell, but I would wait. Why y'all laughing? I live weights. <laughs> and when it comes to uh, the lightweight, it's no problem. <laughs> but when they start adding them 45s on each side, and I'm trying to do the squats, I find myself bending down to one knee. That is because what is on me is too heavy for me to carry. Listen, I have to tell you that when you put Jesus on your situation, when you put Jesus on your circumstance, when you put Jesus on all of your problems, listen, he'll weigh that stuff down and you have no choice but to say, listen, if it had not been, put Jesus who was on my side, if it had not been, put Jesus at the hospital room, if it had not been, put Jesus at the middle room, if it had not been, put Jesus with the bill collector, if it had not been, put Jesus with my children, if it had not been, put Jesus with my marriage, I don't know. Nobody but God that allowed me to do it. Is there anybody who can say, listen, I had some 
some issues and I had to deal with and I got myself together, but it was nobody but God that saw me. Who, who can say, listen, I had some hard days and I had some long nights, but listen, it was nobody but God that got me through. Listen, I had my days of sickness and I had my days when I had to deal with my health. And yes, I took the medicine, but it was nobody but the grace of God. Listen, I had some issues in my marriage. He looked at our situation. He looked at our condition. He looked at our circumstance from a high place. Yes. Amen. He looked at our situation and circumstance from a high place. He looked down and he realized nobody else will be able to save him but me. Right. No matter what you have done, there no finish. No matter what you have done, Jesus, he, he's looking at your situation from a high place. Yes, yes, yes. He, and this is the, he feels what you are feeling at that moment. When you cry, he's crying along with you because his child is hurting. Yes, yes. But he looked down at our situation and he said, nobody else will be able to pay this bill. He came off the throne. God. Yes, he, did. he came to earth and he said I am going to do whatever I have to do to save my people freedom freedom ain't free and we have to stop acting like it is Scripture tells us, shall we continue in sin? So basically about. God forbid. Stop the sinning. Stop doing wrong. You're free from that. How are you going back? This, I, I know. I, I know the, the pull that you feel. It's tempting. It feels good. It's a good time. But Jesus has set you free. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Through his blood yes. that was shed on the cross. Yes. And we take that for granted. Yes. He wants you to be free. Yes. Matter of fact, you are free. Yes. All right. I'll say that. And I'm going to stop with this question. You are free. But are you living free? Mm -hmm. All right. Father God, we come to you as humble as we know how. Yes. We come to you, God, acknowledging that we still have issues. We still have situations that we're dealing with. We still have imperfections. But God, help us to walk in your freeness. Help us to walk according to your will. Help us to not fall back into the person that we were. But help us, God, to press the words of Mark of the high call. Lord, we're reaching out to you. We need a lifeline. Because the burden is too heavy for us to bear. So, Lord, we are down on our knees and we are crying out, Jesus. We're crying out, save us. We're crying out, deliver us. 
We're crying out to you, Lord, to break the chains. Break the generational curse. Yes. Give us, keep us out of bondage. Yes. Yes. And when we leave here, we will forever give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And we give you all the thanks. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, let's put those hands together. If you would, hopefully you are sitting next to someone who you came with. Would you please grab your neighbor's hand? And I want you to pray for that neighbor. We don't need specific details. Don't need to know what they're going through. But I believe that as a neighbor, you should keep your neighbor in prayer. Amen. Pray for them. Cover them. Pray for them. Good to know that somebody is praying for you. When I was a child, just a few years ago, I used to love that song that says, Somebody prayed for me. Yes. They had me on their mind. Yes. They took the time and they prayed for me. And I'm, so glad. I'm so glad. So it's my prayer that we. St. Paul Church and our friends and our family that you keep a member in your prayers. You don't know what they're going through. And it might be your prayer that just keeps them that day. So we thank God for you covering your neighbor. It's offer time. It's offering time. It's offering time. It is offering time. And God he is doing a great thing in the life of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. And we are excited because we get to experience ministry on another level. Amen. Amen. But it is only because of your giving. It's only because of your sacrifice. And we know that the scripture tells us that it is a better blessing to give than it is to receive. So if you uh, do have the heart to give, we do have three ways that you can give. If you're here in person. Then you can just give simply in the envelope. Just tell us it's your tithe and it's your offering. Um, also, we do have Cash App. Uh, go to Cash App and put in at St. Paul 600, or you can go to Giveify.com and search the church, St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. And it is my prayer that what you give, God bless it, and He gives you that double for your sacrifice. Amen. 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 Father God, we do come to you right now. 
Thank you, God, for every person with the heart to give, God. We pray, God, that you continue, God, to bless them. Continue, God, to provide for them and, and keep them, God. God, we pray, God, that whatever they give, God, that uh, they know that it is going into good ground that will soon, God, reap a huge harvest, God, where we can impact and, and encourage and influence, God, not just Lake County, God, but Volusia County and Florida, God. We thank you for this gift, God. We know that you are going to do some amazing things with it, God. So, God, we ask, God, that you just comfort those who do give. Let them know, God, that they can be God's given, no matter how hard they try. So, right now, God, we give with a cheerful heart. We give, God, knowing that it's going to come back to us, God. Maybe in our health, God. Maybe in our uh, mental stability, God. Maybe in our family life, God. However you decide to bless us, God, we want to just say thank you, God. We love you, and we thank you in this name we do pray. Amen. Amen.